are we there yet? Bex and Dan have been driving for several hours. They've decided to have a break and have pulled into a service station for petrol and snacks, of course. I thought we'd never get around those lorries. There were loads of them and they were going so slowly. Yeah, maybe they should have a separate lane just for lorries, especially as lines of lorries could end up being even longer. Did you know they are working on connecting lorries together in long platoons, using computers to keep them all the same distance apart? That makes life easier for lorry drivers. Maybe not for everyone else, though. Hey, Dan, look over there. They've got electric car charging points now, as well as petrol pumps. Look at that electric car. It's a Tesla. That's Elon Musk's company. Didn't he blast a car into space? What was that all about? If you're a billionaire inventor, Bex, do you need a reason? I guess not. Electric cars are becoming more popular every year. In 2013, there were just 3,500 electric vehicles in the UK, an absolutely minuscule amount compared to the 212,000 at the end of 2018. And by 2020, it's forecast that there will be close to 1 million. Lucky for him, he's the only car charging up, unlike us sat in this queue for the petrol pump. Ah, but we won't have to charge again on our journey. You see, some electric cars can only run for 100 miles or so on one charge. This might be true today, but as battery technology becomes better, electric vehicles will be able to go further and further. A really exciting development might be designated lanes which carry an electric charge, so that electric vehicles won't have to stop at all. Unless you want a brake, of course. It says here that in Sweden there are electric lorries that use pantographs to connect to electric lines above the road to keep them going, like trains do. Hmm, petrol pumps could be a thing of the past. Electric cars might be cool, but do you know what would be even cooler? Driverless cars! You just get in and off you go! I think you might have watched too many sci-fi movies, Dan. The guys are wrong. Driverless cars, or CAVs, connected autonomous vehicles, do exist. But how do they work? Every day, drivers have to make a bunch of decisions about how and where to move, how fast to go, and when to avoid obstacles. A driverless car will have to make exactly those same decisions by itself, using as much information as it can gather. They'll get information from radars and cameras in the car itself, and also grab information from satellites, road management systems, and even other cars to read the road and respond in the right way. I'm not sure I'd want to test a driverless car. What if the computer got hacked and I ended up in Beijing instead of Battersea? It's true that driverless cars will have a few challenges to overcome, not least that human beings are, well, unpredictable and don't always stick to the rules. Humans might not be able to connect to the internet, yet, but they're actually very good at making sense of information from other humans. This is handy in situations where there are lots of people in the road, for example in busy cities or at the exit to a special event. Driverless cars might just decide to stop until all the people have gone away. And that might not be great for other cars in the queue. We might be able to get around this by having special lanes or making roads super deep so that pedestrians aren't able to step in the road at all. Or maybe driverless cars could take to the sky, like drones. No pedestrians up there. So you might have separate lanes on the motorways for driverless cars. There could be a lane for electric vehicles for them to charge up on the go. A lane for convoys of connected lorries. And a few for everyone else, maybe with the lanes in different colours. Wow! Roads might look more like racetracks with all those different lanes for different types of vehicles. Do you think they'll use different coloured tarmac? Roads don't have to be black or grey. New kinds of surfacing means roads can be in almost any colour you like. As well as brightly coloured lanes on the motorway, natural shades could be chosen too in greener places. That's something that's already happening. At an RSPB nature centre in Nottingham, soft natural greys and browns are used for the surfaces at the visitor centre. That'd be cool. Fancy a ride on a rainbow road? Who doesn't fancy a ride on a rainbow road? Are we there yet? with support from the Royal Academy of Engineering. Find out more at funkidslive.com slash roads.